over the last three years as President of the United States, I have kept my commitments to the state of Israel. At every crucial juncture, at every fork in the road, we have been there for Israel every single time. Today, I will show you the most disgusting display of brown-nosing subservience to a foreign nation ever to dishonor the American presidency. It is, of course, Obama at the APAC conference. APAC is an acronym for the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. APAC is by far the most powerful lobby in America. Now think about that fact. Think about the fact that Zionist controlled media never even mentions the absurdity of the fact that America's most powerful lobby is for a foreign nation. Yet APAC is only the tip of the iceberg. Israel's Ynet News brags that the three biggest Democratic and Republican campaign contributors in American politics are Zionists, and that the biggest is Hayam Sabin, an Israeli citizen. Now, did you catch that? The biggest American political financier is a citizen of a foreign nation, and this foreign nation subsists on your money and on the blood of your children to fight their wars. The Washington Post revealed casually that 60% of Democrat presidential funds are from the same tiny tribe, and that they comprise at least half of the Republican contributions. The so-called super PACs have made finance reform a joke in America. Here's an article showing the two biggest super PAC contributors. They are George Soros among Democrats and Sheldon Adelson among Republicans. Two sides of the same tribe. Others are Harold Simmons and don't forget Barack Obama's biggest corporate contributor, Goldman Sachs, run by Mr. Blankfein and Mr. Cohn. And if you can't identify the tribe, then you've lost the powers of observation. But nothing illustrates their supremacy over the politics of America better than the supine, sniveling subservience of President Obama at the recent APAC conference. Obama boasts about supporting Israel no matter what evil it does. Listen as he admits that in spite of the budget cuts that direly affect you and your children and millions of Americans, he brags about increasing every single year your money that is sent to Israel. Despite a tough budget environment, our security assistance has increased every single year. Over the decades, you have sent untold billions of dollars to Israel. That represents hundreds of thousands of dollars to every Israeli family. When will the government send you and your family a check for a hundred grand? Obama didn't dare mention Israel's terrorism and treachery against America in the Levant affair, the attack on the USS Liberty, and the Jonathan Pollard spy case. If Israel's an ally, then we need no enemies. Before I show you the next clip, I need to point out that one of the most influential Zionist-run lobbies in America is the Hebrew Immigrant Society. It brags about its power in changing American immigration laws that have led European Americans to go from 90% of the population to a soon-to-be minority. The Jewish Forward newspaper says that the leader of this powerful lobby, Aronoff, has been instrumental in dismantling American immigration laws and is very devoted to the interests of the Jewish people and Israel. Now, the same Zionist leaders who boast about their role in the demographic shift of America and the displacement of the European majority support Israel and its displacement of the once Palestinian majority. You see, we're all Palestinians now. But nothing matches the hypocrisy and the sick and disgusting servile display of the leader of the world's only superpower. Here is the President of the United States expressing his concern about Jews losing their overwhelming demographic dominance of Israel. And then Obama makes clear his dedication to Israel as an exclusively Jewish state. The reality that Israel faces from shifting demographics to an extremely difficult international environment because Israel's place as a Jewish and democratic state must be protected. What did he say? He expresses concern about what? From shifting demographics. Because Israel's place as a Jewish and democratic state must be protected. 
Israel's demographic shift? Obama tells Zionist masters that he's so worried about Israel's demographic shift and the need to preserve Israel as a Jewish state. Now this is the same Barack Obama who supports open immigration that will make a dramatic demographic shift in America. Obama also demands that Europe open its borders and endure a demographic shift. He tried to force the EU to accept non-European nations with huge populations into the European Union. But by God, he says, you have to support Israel and support its preservation as a, quote, Jewish state. We have to stop that demographic shift. What a cowardly, servile hypocrite. Before I go further, we must address the repeated big lie that Israel is democratic. Obama's Zionist speechwriters link Jewish state with the word democratic because Jewish state by itself, well, it sounds rather ethnocentric. Israel is not a democratic state. It was founded by terrorizing and kicking hundreds of thousands of people out of their homes and then not letting them return to the place of their birth. Many of them are still alive. They didn't get to vote about any of this. That is not democratic. Israel military occupies the West Bank, steals Palestinian land, and Palestinians can't even travel to many areas without being subject to checkpoints and being imprisoned and tortured at the whim of the Zionist regime. Palestinians under Jewish occupation don't get to vote on any of this. There's no democracy here. The people of Gaza are trapped in a huge concentration camp. Israel controls what goes in and what goes out, controls and heavily taxes all goods. Israel regularly assassinates and bombs and kills Palestinians in Gaza, as they did when they recently killed 1,200 residents, half of them women and children. Do the people of Gaza get to vote on their rulers or even whether they get bombed and murdered? Is this democracy? So next time the Zionist liars on TV and in politics describe Israel as a democratic state, you know exactly what to call their lies. I know what I call it. Calling Israel democratic is total bullshit. Sorry to use that word, but it's the only adequate word I know to describe this incessant, sick lie. Now, let's deal with Obama's lie about how Israel is not a racist state. When the Durban conference was commemorated, we boycotted it and we will always reject the notion that Zionism is racism. In fact, Israel is shockingly similar to the historical state they hate the most, the German Nazi state. First off, as I said before, Israel has the toughest immigration law in the world. It is rooted in their tribal genetics. For instance, a Jew, even an atheist Jew, is permitted to immigrate to Israel from anywhere on earth, while Palestinians who were born in what is now Israel can't even return to their homeland where they grew up. Next, Israel is a segregated state. Israel has segregated schools, segregated apartment buildings, neighborhoods, and even many of their settlements on stolen Palestinian land are completely segregated and Palestinians can't even walk in them. Now imagine for a moment if any European nation created white-only segregated schools and neighborhoods, say in London or Paris or New York or Chicago. You know the reaction. Mr. Obama and the entire media would react with horror. You know that that's true. If a state such as Alabama tried to do it, America would restart the Civil War, if necessary, to stop it. Now I ask you, imagine if a European nation passed a law that forbid Europeans from marrying Jews. The passing of such a law is, of course, unimaginable. It would be called the epitome of evil. Every politician and media outlet in the world would condemn it. But wait, Israel has such a law right now. And unless you have seen my videos, you likely don't even know that in Israel, a Jew cannot legally marry a non-Jew, not even in a civil ceremony. And by the way, this is about blood, not religion, because a non-religious Jewish atheist is fully permitted to marry a religious Jew in Israel. The key issue then is not the person's religion, but their ethnic heritage. 
What would Barack Obama call any European nation that forbid marriage to Jews or say to black people? Would he not condemn it as racist? But he has sold his soul to the Zionists. And this hypocrite says we must support this state in no matter what evil it does. But wait, there's more. The Jewish elite in Israel are called the Kohanim, or the priest class. They're characterized by names such as Kohen or Khan. In Israel, by law, Kohanim is not allowed to marry anyone but a genetically pure Jew. Of course, that's laughable on its face. But Israel demands a higher standard of racial purity for Kohanim than Hitler did for the elite, the SS. The SS wanted purity for three generations back. The Kohanim must not have a drop of Gentile blood in their bloodline unto a thousand generations. Now here's an article from a Jewish publication. It's called, Not Jewish Enough to Marry a Kohen. The state of Israel forbids a Kohen from marrying a fully religious Jewish girl because she has a remote Gentile ancestor. Believe it or not, Israel has stiffer race laws than the Nazis had. In fact, a former Israeli Supreme Court Justice, a Kohenim himself, Hayam Cohen, there's that name again, wrote, quote, the bitter irony of fate decreed that the same biological and racist argument extended by the Nazis and which inspired the inflammatory laws of Nuremberg serve as the basis for the official definition of Jewishness and the state of Israel. You have grown up your whole life learning about the evil of the Nazi Nuremberg Laws. Well, Nuremberg Laws are going on right at this moment, and you hear nothing about it in the media. Here are the Kohenim in their costumes. On the lighter side, do these costumes remind you of anything? Funny, isn't it? The same Zionist media that tries to smear me because of my associations as a young man decades ago. Support the most racist, supremacist state on the planet. And why has the media kept these facts from you? You can figure that out when you learn the identity of the tribe that dominates the media and that will vilify anyone like me who tells you the truth. Barack Obama is Israel's lapdog. The fact that he can get a free pass in our media is proof that these Zionist tribalists not only occupy Palestine, but also our government, our media, and our financial institutions like the Federal Reserve. Today, we're all Palestinians now. And it's not just Obama. The leading Republicans are just as bad, maybe even worse. It is time for America to be free and for the world to be free. The facts of this video cannot be refuted. You can be sure that the enemies of truth and freedom will try to suppress it. And you can help get this video out to the world. And be sure to not only subscribe to my channel here, but to my website at davidduke.com because subscribing at my site is the only way you can be sure to continue to see my videos and read my latest articles. Maybe Obama or perhaps some Republican leader in the future will find the strength to stand up openly to these masters of deceit, of war and evil. But no matter, Millions of us are awakening all over the world. The truth is growing in our hearts and minds and souls. And someday the courageous spirit that lies within all of us will triumph. Every people will be free. And no one but God above will be supreme over us. God bless you all.